Josh, could you just see if we've got any more cones? To continue the progression for triple jump coaching, um, we'll be using the triple jump grid. We'll be asking all athletes to start to start from a standing position, move forward on their favoured leg and land on that same leg, land on the opposite leg and land in the sand pits and safely on two feet. The grid is constructed on a 10-8-10 ratio. The shortest side will be achievable by the youngest and most challenged athlete. This could be 1.5 meters, 1.2 meters and 1.5 meters respectively for hop, step and jump. This could be progressed along the side of the pit to 4 meters, 3.2 and 4 meters again respectively for hop, step and jump. Before progression can commence, we're looking for the competency of rhythm, balance and control from each athlete. Once an athlete is competent at moving through the ratio on the smallest side of the grid, we can then progress them to the next lane. Um, this is at the same ratio, still a 10-8-10 ratio throughout, and then we can then challenge each athlete in turn. What we must be very careful of is do not allow athletes to take a run or a couple of strides into the takeoff. This could result in injuries um, through poor control. The skills to promote at this stage are safe flat foot landings, upright postures and shapes, and a nice even rhythm through the phases. Coaches should be aware of the problems through this section of the coaching stages. They could be landing heel first with a leg too far out in front. It could be landing on the toes, which is, could cause potential injuries to knee, ankle or hip. They could be overexertion through the phases, um, causing heavy landings uh, and bad balance. To observe these athletes, the best coaching positions are from the front, from the rear and from either side. We'll be looking for nice flat foot landings, good upright um, postures and shapes, good balance, um, hips staying below the body line, in a nice straight alignment and a nice even rhythm from one phase to the next. Once we're satisfied that the athlete is competent, uh, we, we need to introduce momentum. We can do this very slightly and very gradually by introducing two stride approaches. Um, so the athlete will have a two stride approach into the initial takeoff. As long as they can still demonstrate good balance, good rhythm, um, good flat foot landings, and we can then progress and add more momentum at a later time. All momentum should be added in a nice even rhythm, um, so I suggest two strides at a time. With the increased forces by the momentum from the um, extended approaches into the triple jump grid, we then have greater forces to contend with. The coaching points that must be adhered to here are a good stable flat foot landing, um, a good rhythm throughout um, good posture and shapes. We have to have an active foot landing to then promote conservation of speed as we challenge the athlete. Um, we can do this by use of a reaching and pawing action through the, through the legs. This could be a problem to an athlete who misunderstands the instruction of down and back. Um, some athletes will try and put the whole leg through and swing it through in a forward direction and then try and swing the whole leg down and back. This could quite easily result in the, le the foot landing in front of the body line cre uh, creating a heavy heel landing and massive jarring or shock. At all times we're looking for an upright posture or shape. We're looking for the hips to be directly below a perpendicular body line.